Hey everyone, Angelus here. Welcome to this video. Uh, the purpose of this video, as you see by the title, I've called it the Producers Toolbox or Trans Producers Toolbox. And um, this video, I want to start off by saying it's aimed at anyone who is a beginner producer or looking to get into producing and just basically wants a few tips in terms of like you know what to buy what to get what are some good plugins some good synths uh, it's really to get you started uh, on this journey get you moving in the right direction and I guess take a bit of the guesswork out because as I'm sure any producer will tell you uh, we spend an absolute fortune on plugins and unfortunately a lot of them you know we kind of buy them and then forget that we've even got them or just never used them which isn't exactly um, a good habit to get into so I thought I could break it down show you the plugins that I like using I'm sure you know these plugins are probably used by a lot more people than just me uh, and also take you through some good websites where you can get sounds, you know, good sample packs, uh, good preset packs, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, everything I say isn't sort of fact. This isn't the end all be all. This is just sort of my opinion, what works for me. Uh, you all have to sort of go out by yourself and go on that, I guess, discovery journey find stuff that you like you know or that works for your sound or for whatever you're trying to create um, but I still think you know these these things that I'm going to show you today are definitely uh, a good a good starting point at the very least um, there's some great free plugins about I'll show you a couple uh, in this video as well um, there's some expensive plugins and there's some sort of middle of the road plugins my advice to anyone who uh, is planning on buying plugins, the two best times of the year to buy plugins is in the summer and Black Friday. Uh, Black Friday for a lot of producers is kind of like Christmas come early because everything's on sale. You can just get some really good deals, um, you know, and, and, and that really is the time to buy if you are patient. Um, and you can wait until summer or Black Friday, depending on what part of the year it is when you're watching this. I would definitely always say try and just save up your money or hang on to your money and buy everything that you want during those sale periods because you really will save yourself an absolute fortune. So to start off with, obviously the most important things that you're going to need when you're producing is a PC or Mac or at least a computer, um, a pair of monitors and I'd say like the, the room treatment or getting the sound that's coming out of your monitors to be as accurate as possible. Um, I've spoken to quite a few, you know, engineers and different producers and they all pretty much say the same thing where before you even think about buying a single plugin you need to spend as much money as you can afford on your computer on your monitors and on your listening environment you know you want the most powerful pc you can get the best spec monitors that you can get and then whatever you know what as a third i guess you need to spend that money on treating your room now take it from someone that knows and has learned this the hard way don't just go out and buy a pack of them foam panels and just stick them all around your room because it's it's really not going to do that much and um, there's a really good well there's various good websites i know i think it's called gik acoustics um, you can go in there, plan out your whole room, you know, and they'll help you to get, you know, the best possible panels, um, base traps, you know, wall traps, whatever it is, uh, specific to your room. 
like this this is so important and i feel it gets overlooked so often by a lot of producers because most people you know they'll buy a computer a semi-decent computer a pair of rockets and you know a, a smallish or so we say cheap audio interface and off they go i would really really strongly advise against that um just you know the computer definitely the number one in terms of priorities and in terms of where you want to you know spend your money second your monitors definitely the most important thing next to your computer and then as i said on the third of that your room treatment if it's not viable for you to treat your room uh you know depending on where you live in or you know you might not be able to um there's there's other options like for example sonar works or like room correction uh software that you can look into but i would always try and go down the acoustic treatment route if you can and as i said don't just go out and buy a load of foam panels and stick them in random places around your room and think you know hey we're done because you might actually be doing more harm than good going down that route you know plan it out if you're good at diy uh, this this will be an easy option for you because really all you need is some wood some rock wool and some fabric you know and you can make your own um panels and traps and things like that there's loads of tutorials on youtube showing how to do that uh definitely definitely a big 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 thing that you want to look at is uh, is that room treatment and getting it done to, you know to the best of your abilities or to the best of what your budget allows you to do um once you've got your computer, your monitors, your room treated, then obviously we can get into the computer and we can start looking at software. You need, number one, a DAW. Um, what's the best DAW? I hear you asking. Well, this really is so such a personal kind of choice. And, and, and you know, anyone that uses a DAW will say that their DAW is the best. Uh, I've used a lot of different ones, you know, Cubase, Reason, Logic, Studio One, uh, Bitwig, Ableton. My preferred one is Ableton. Every track that I've made that's been signed and released, I've made in Ableton. Uh, I just, you know, for me, it works the best. When it comes to choosing your DAW, my advice would be they all come with like trials uh, where you can, you know, test them out or light versions where you can you know get a basic feel for them just go and try them all you know spend a couple of days or a week with each one see which one works for you don't just go for one because your friend uses one or because your favorite producer uses a specific one because what works for them or how their brain works might not be how your brain works and it might not work for you uh, the only way you know think about it as sort of buying a car you're not just going to see a car online and then buy it or at least i hope you wouldn't do that you probably want to go to the dealership or wherever it is take a few for a test drive and then once you've got a feel for the car you know how they handle how fast they go the braking all that type of things then then you can you know make a choice and say right i'm going to buy this car i'm going to buy that car it's exactly the same with your daw um Obviously, if you want Logic, then you're going to need a Mac computer because uh, it only runs on Mac unless you get you know, a Hackintosh and go down that route. Uh, I don't personally know that much about it, so I can't really make any uh, recommendations on that. Um, but, you know, buying a Mac is a really good way of getting a good computer, um, especially when it comes to anything like video editing or sound you know sound music production i think macs work really well uh, especially the new macs with the m chips or the m pro m max chips uh, have a look at them if you are you know the new macbooks or the macbook pros should i say uh, they really are powerful now uh, in terms of what's important in a pc or in, in a mac number one is your processor this will determine you know how many plugins you can run at the same time how many channels you can run at the same time uh, before it starts crashing or before it starts stuttering distorting uh, your processor is definitely the number one priority i would say uh, the new m chips as i said is great 
Pro Max, obviously, if you can get the Max. If not, I think the Pro is still very, very good, extremely fast. Uh, they're just getting more and more powerful. Uh, if you're Intel based or PC based, then you know, look at your i9 as many cores as possible. Um, that is the you know the the number one priority when it comes to a PC. Second is your RAM. Uh, this will help when you're using you know sample banks or sample libraries when you're using things like Contact or Nexus or Omnisphere or you know plugins like that that that, that really needs or that's really where your RAM kicks in. Uh, me personally, at the minute, I'm running 16 gigabytes of RAM, and I probably, I'd say it's okay, but if you can, try and go for 32. I know there's people now also running 64. Um, you know, the more money you spend on your PC, the longer you future-proof it. Like, if you sort of bite the bullet right now and spend, you know, a bit of money on your computer, hopefully it's going to last you for a long time. Um, if you start making sort of budget cuts and you start thinking, oh, well, you know, I don't, I only need this amount of RAM or I can do with this, this type of processor, you know, you try and save a bit of money here and there. It's just going to bite you, bite you really, you know, as, as, as the years go on. Whereas if you go for the absolute max spec right now, it's going to last you a much longer time in the future. Uh, so really important that you get. A, you know a strong pc or a strong computer mac uh that can stand the test of time or at least you know get you going for let's say the next 10 years um and then third is storage space so i know you can buy external ssds um definitely if you can stay away from the cheaper ones uh samsung do really good uh, ssds have a look at them. Uh, I think you can get like a, a terabyte now for not that much. I think, you know, obviously the prices uh, go down. Um, it is, especially when you start looking at big libraries in contact and things like that, you know, these are libraries that are very, very big. Same with sample packs. You know, you're talking gigabytes and gigabytes and gigabytes and you will very quickly see that fill up. So once again, get as much as you can. I'd say a terabyte at the very least. Um, on a Mac, RAM costs a lot of money. Um, it is just very unfortunate because obviously on a MacBook Pro, it's hard to replace the RAM yourself. I know on iMacs, they actually have a little flap at the back that you can take off. And you can put your own RAM in, so that's an option. And if not, once again, it's another one of them where you're going to have to bite the bullet and just try and get, you know, I'd say 32 uh, gigabytes of RAM at the very least. And I think that should last you for quite quite some time. Um, so you've got your computer, you've got your speakers, an audio interface. I think this is dependent. I think this is somewhere where you can save a bit of money on. If you want to go into the UAD world, you know, you have... Um, a bit more of an expensive option with the Apollo and the Apollo Twin. Great audio interfaces, by the way. That's what, what I'm using. I love it. I love UAD plugins. I think they sound great. Um, I think SSL also do a slightly cheaper audio interface. That's really good. Uh, that I think comes with like some of their plugins as well. Um, all you need, obviously, is a main out for your speakers. And then, you know, as many inputs as you can get. Uh, so if you ever maybe want to hook up a microphone, you know, record vocals, or maybe you want a hardware synth that you decide to get, um, that's where obviously your inputs uh, are going to come in handy. But you know, you can get a decent audio interface for I'd say at least you know maybe like a hundred quid to hundred and fifty quid. The more expensive versions are there for you if you want, but I don't think it's a a deal breaker unless you do want to get into that UAD. Uh, universal audio world and start looking at their plugins um, which do you know unfortunately come with a hefty price tag they're not cheap but they are very very good you know i absolutely love them uh, it's one of the few plugins really where you actually can just hear a difference like you can just hear the quality and what they do to a sound 
Um, and I've never really heard many people say bad words about UAD plugins neither. Like, there's a few I use that I just love. Um, and yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's a whole different world to explore. Definitely notice it above, you know, your waves and your plugin alliance. They just have this extra level of quality to them. But unfortunately, it comes with a price tag. So here we go in the DAW. What I've done is I've just put a few synths that I like using. Uh, very basic synths. You don't need all of them. You know, you can basically just buy one. I would say with any synth, most people will probably buy the synth and then go looking for sound banks or preset packs, which is fine. But really, if you buy a synth, you want to fully explore that synth and learn what that synth does or can do, learn how it works. So, for example, if I take Spire A, like, yeah, from an init patch, creating your own sound and everything like that could be quite difficult, like, even for me. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not a synth expert, but what I can do is if I load up a patch, I know how to, you know, shape the envelopes. I know how the EQ section works. I know how the different effects section work. I know, you know, how I can change the oscillators, move them up and down in an octave, add things, take things away, um, you know, work on the arp, the arpeggiator, change that if I want to work in the modulation matrix, get different mod sources affecting different parameters, all of that stuff, even though it's quite basic, it's still worth knowing, and that goes for any synth, like whether it's Spire or Silent, whatever it is, you want to at least learn the basics of how that synth works, and the more you learn a synth and the more you can control a synth, the better it is for whether you're using presets or not, because you might get a preset, that sounds okay, but it's not quite how you, you know, what you want it to be. So once you start getting into those presets and editing them, that's really when you get a much better view or control over how, you know, over what what a synth can do and what you can do with a synth. So in terms of the spires I've got loaded here, I've just got two very basic, well, not basic, but two sound banks that, you know I really like um, so we've got the mag signature sound uh, volume one so this one uh, amazing sounds in there guys pretty much anything you're ever gonna need I know they've got volume two out now as well I've not really had much chance to look at that but volume one you know it's it's just a really it's just a really great, great uh, sound set. Highly recommend it. Um, let's just see what we got. Oh, you know, there's, uh, there's just just everything about about these these sounds works. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. I'm on the wrong one. Sorry, guys. Uh, just really. You know, in terms of trance, just perfect, perfect sounds. Um, so check out the Mag Signature Sound, uh, Volume 1 or Volume 2. Uh, they'll both be good. And also another one that I like is the Darren Porter and Sean Tyus Spire Sound Sets. They're really good. They're from Freshly Squeezed Samples. Um, check them out. Uh, next synth we've got is Silent. I think pretty much everyone knows Silent. Uh, this is a great synth to learn on. It's quite easy to understand. Pretty much everyone that I know <laughs> uses this or has used this at some point. Um, a really, really, yeah, just, 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 just a workhorse. Just a workhorse synth that you can do a lot with. Um, the sound bank that I would recommend for this. I think it's called the Freshly Squeezed Definitive Collection. I think that's the one. Um, yeah, just lovely, lovely sounds in it. Um, you know, you got everything here that you would ever need. Uh, there's many presets in here that will have been used in your favorite 
you know your favorite tracks you know there's a lot of, of really good presets in here but as i said guys don't just use the preset as is try and mess around with them you know try and make them your own try and just just do something different with them um because otherwise it just sounds generic you know it just sounds like basically everything that's been done before uh, which you know you don't want you want something that's going to be unique to you um you know your sound your style your way of doing things and as i said the one way that you can do that is by actually learning the synth learning how the synth works you know what do the effects do how do these you know modulation sources and envelopes and, and things like that work once you know that you can take any preset change them edit them you know shape them to a part where you know you, they're yours you know you, you make them your own so yeah silent inspire very basic since i know everyone probably knows them or has heard about them um just a great starting point uh, if you if you're looking to make trance um but you know use it as a starting point and then go and try and discover your own you know try and see which ones you like the sound of every synth has its own tone its own character um the reason why you might say that a lot of you know music genre x sounds similar is probably because a lot of the producers within music genre x are using the same synths you know that character that tone it's very hard to mask that it's hard to you know get rid of that it will always be there so if you want to be something that's just completely different and you see everyone using you know spire and silent well maybe you want to use a different synth maybe you think well actually no i want to use june so june 2 i think it's june 3 now absolutely love this synth i think the sound bank for this that i've got is also the freshly squeezed um definitive collection or essential collection i don't know what it's called an awesome awesome synth guys i really don't understand why this synth is slept on as much as it is everyone just seems to go for spire or silent but i think you can do so much um with this and you know really really uh great trans sounds that you can get out of this so definitely also another one to check out and then we've also got zebra Zebra, I know, is a favourite of many people. Uh, once again, the freshly squeezed banks here, they, they do some good banks. Um, can, you know, make any sound you want with this. Works a little bit differently to, you know, June, Silent Spire, because these are all, like, subtractive synths. Whereas Zebra is, you know, it is a subtractive synth, but it's also, like, semi-modular, I think is, is the correct sort of term for it. Um, and yeah, you know, it's uh, it's it's a great synth, great sound, different tone, different character to Silent and Spire. You know, it's it, it, I doubt I don't think this one is used as much as Silent and Spire, same as June. Um, so you know, check them out. They all will probably come with some sort of trial or demo mode. Um, have a play around with them. Have a listen to the sound. Have a li try and listen to that tone and that character. Try and program a few patches or just mess around editing a few patches and see what works for you. You know, what, what, what do you like the feel of? Which synth do you want to learn further? Uh, because that's important. You know, if you buy one of these, you know, you'll spend, I don't know, 100 quid or 150 quid, however much it is. You know, you've spent that money. Don't just have it as a preset browser. You know, try and learn the ins and outs of it. Try and discover it. And, you know, be able to use it to the highest level possible. Um, I think that's really important as well. You know, when you buy something, uh, you know, you spend, you sort of spend your hard-earned money on it. Why not, you know, try and try and really utilize it to the best of your abilities and work out the full ins and outs of that synth. And that goes for any plugin, by the way, not just synths, but obviously there's a little bit more to synths than say a compressor or an eq um so those are just like i said guys three synths to get started with zebra june silent and spire i would recommend silent if you want to learn sound design and synthesis i just think the way it's laid out the way it works 
it's just very simple, very easy to understand. Um, and I think a lot of the skills that you will learn on silent, you can then sort of take them and put them into something like Spire or, you know, something like Dune. It all, it's all kind of similar. It's just the layouts are different. You know, they have different options, different ways of doing things. But in essence, it kind of stays the same. You know, you have oscillators, you shape the oscillators, you have filters, you filter the sounds that the oscillators make, you have effects, and then you have modulation sources that can control, you know, different parts of the synth. That, in essence, is what it is. Um, and, you know, use this definitely if you want to learn synthesis from the ground up i would recommend this over say something like zebra because zebra can be a little bit more confusing or even spire as well you know i think spire is a good one to learn on uh but for me you know this, this silent there's a reason why it's so widely used uh because it's just it's just a really good you know solid workhorse synth that can do a lot for you in terms of the sounds that it can generate, but also can do a lot for you in terms of learning synthesis, uh, you know, and learning sound design. Okay, so that's it for synths. Let's have a look at some effects. So I've got here delays, reverbs, uh, and some imaging. Obviously in trance, delay and reverb are absolutely, you know, one of the most important things uh, that there is in terms of the sound effects. Um, first of all, I've got the Ableton delay here, but really this is basically meant to represent whatever your, um, you know, DAW delay is. You know, every every DAW will come with its own delay. Before you go looking at any sort of third party delays. I'd always say learn this one inside out. You know, it comes f f well free. It comes with your DAW. It will be able to do what all these other ones do to a certain degree. Um, the sound will be different. You know, obviously every delay has different options. Once again, it has a different tone, a different character. But for your basic sort of stuff, um, you know, I, I use this delay a hell of a lot. Like a hell of a lot. Uh, I, I love it, you know, it's, it's just a great little delay and it's the exact same with, you know, whether you're in Logic or Studio One or Cubase, They'll, you know, a delay is a delay is a delay, <laughs> no pun intended and yeah, you know, that's the, that actually should be your first stop well, really, when you're looking at any kind of effect, your first stop should always be what comes in the DAW like this is Ableton, so if you look here on all the plugins that you get you know, there's so many in there. They all do different things. They all come with, um, you know, presets that you can use. Um, you know, they, they, you can mess around with them. Like, I mean, here, Synth Lead Lushener. So I'm pretty sure if I put that in um, on a synth or on a lead or put this on a pad, it's going to give me a good starting point and then I can look at that plugin and, 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 and see what it's doing. You know, see, all right, what, what, how is this plugin programmed? What is it doing to the sound? Okay, so that's, you know, for any effect, any plugin effect, processing effect, have a look at what comes with your DAW first of all. Some DAWs will have plugins that are great. Uh, so, for example, I love the Ableton Delay. Uh, I think it's fantastic. Not really a fan of the compressor. Um also love the Ableton EQ 8, use this so much, probably one of my most used plugins, I've got it on the next section, but you know, have a look at them, learn them, test them, mess around with them, look at the presets, you know, figure out how they work, figure out how to get them to do what you want them to do, and just as with Silent, and you know, using this to learn synthesis on, once you learn the plugins that come with your DAW and how to use them. Once you then look at the third party plugins, it's very easy to sort of transfer the skills that you learn on this into say, Replica XT. Uh, you know, Replica XT, great delay. I love all, I mean, when you look at sort of presets, look at all of these. I mean, there's just so many and they all do, you know, different things and it's great going through them all and 
seeing what they do you know this gives you a, a bit more options than say the standard ableton delay you can add um saturation uh, you can add effects like chorus flanger phaser frequency shifter pitch shift all of that stuff you know you can um you know they it just it just basically gives you a lot more stuff to tweak um the next one is h delay so again just a you know a sort of a standard simple kind of delay from waves this one comes with an analog button uh that just adds i think it just adds a little bit of noise or a bit of what they like to call warmth most people i know switch that off the lo-fi mode's quite nice just gives that delay a little bit of a different character you know it has everything once again that this delay has that this this delay has you know uh, but it will have its own kind of sound as well its own tone its own character and workflow you know you have to see which you like using you know you might really like using replica you know you might think oh no i don't like that it's you know it doesn't work for me i find it complicated or i don't fully understand it or i think it's a lot to mess around with whereas with h delay you might think hey this is easy you know it's it's all there it's all in front of me you know i can quickly get it to do what i need it to do um you know you can get, have a setup a and a setup b flip, flip between the two if you want to sort of a b and, and and you know have a different delays quickly f switch backward and forward or back and forth to see you know what works what doesn't work um then we've got echo boy this is from sound toys another great delay i love in sound toys how you have all these different styles of delays you know look i mean there's so many and like in the in the presets as well you know just so many great presets that you get here um and yeah you know th th this is a really really nice sounding delay um there's extra options as well if you press this magic button you can you can do stuff here depending on what type of you know delay you select this changes um so for example if i go to dual echo you know you get more options if i go to ping pong you get different options rhythm echo you know i mean you can really go to town with these guys um and and just create you know your own individual unique kind of delays that isn't just a standard you know eighth dotted or quarter quarter note delay whatever it is you know try and get in here you can mess around with the groove you know, you can make it, you know, for, for for groove or shuffle. You can mess around with these knobs as well. You can obviously sync it to your tempo. You can sync it to a different tempo. So, for example, you might want to, I don't know, half speed it or double speed it, whatever you want. Echo Boy gives you the options of doing that. Great, great, great delay. I love this one. I mean, I love all of these ones. The ones that I probably use the most are the ableton delay you know despite all of those options the ableton delay uh replica xt and echo boy you know these three are like my main kind of delays um that i like using in my productions for different things but yeah really this one the ableton one is the uh the one that gets used the most uh next we have reverbs so I'll quickly, I mean, this is the main one that literally everybody uses, the trance reverb, as uh, as it's known, Arts Acoustic. My only concern with Arts Acoustic is that it's a bit dated now, and I feel if you're on Mac, and as the Mac starts upgrading the operating systems, I feel at some point this is going to fall off and not be supported anymore, which is kind of why I've been looking for different delays Oh, sorry, different reverbs. Um, because, yeah, at some point, this is just not going to be supported anymore. And it is going to go... Obviously, if you're on PC, you don't have that problem. Um, but, yeah, Arts Acoustic, great reverb. Pretty much everyone I know that is, you know, a trans producer uses this, loves this. You know, it, it just does the job very, very well. Uh, this is a fairly new one. Uh, that I came into contact with last year, Comet. I feel this this one's a good reverb, but it's quite a heavy reverb. Uh, it can very quickly become a little bit messy. 
uh, because it's very thick, it's very lush, you know, it's, it's just a, a really powerful sounding reverb. So you really have to be careful with how you use this. Uh, I, I'm constantly flicking back and forth between this and Arts Acoustic and I always kind of end up with Arts Acoustic. It just, yeah, I, I don't know, I just prefer it. Uh, then, you know, you've got your sort of your, your other kind of reverbs for, you know, your drums or sort of, you know, your room reverbs, your, your ambience reverbs, Valhalla Room. Another one that's used by a lot of people. Uh, great little reverb. Anything by Valhalla is good. Uh, they don't do sales. They've kind of got this motto of, no, we have a fixed price for our plugins. It's not that expensive. Um, and yeah, they, 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 they just don't ever put anything on sale, which, you know, fair enough to them. So Valhalla Room, great sound. Uh, and Valhalla Vintage Verb. Also, this one has a bit more flavour than Valhalla Room. Um, in terms of the tweakability, I, I, I don't really think you know there's that much difference. You can pretty much do the same in both, but obviously you've got these different you know different colours. Uh, they all have different sounds, you know, different modes, so sort of different rooms, bright hall, plate, you know, all these different things, different settings that you can mess around with. So definitely worth checking that out. Uh, then we have Black Hole. Uh, I think you need a dongle for this one. I think you need an iLock dongle. I can't remember. Just something a bit different. You know, you can get some pretty spacey reverbs for this. It works well on like ambient sounds, ambient noises, uh, things that you need. You know, really big reverb tails on. Uh, another one. You know, worth checking out. Uh, and then this one's free. I absolutely love this. Once again, Valhalla. Valhalla Supermassive, this is like a reverb and a delay in one. Um, yeah, this is just such a great plugin. If you're making trance music, get this plugin. As I said, it's free. You know, you can go and download this now. It won't cost you a penny, and it is just amazing. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Then, in terms of widening, so basically stereo imaging, you know, do you want things more spread out across the stereo field? Or do you want them down the middle? A wider, another free plugin. I love this because I feel the transition from wider, from say when you make something wide, you know, when you spread something out, when it's sort of converted onto a mono system or mono, I just feel the conversion works really well. Sometimes with stereo imaging plugins, if you push something out to the sides by a lot, and you then listen to it in mono, which, you know, as most club systems are in mono, it, it can sound a bit weird. You know, it, I, I don't know what, what it, why it is, but it, it, just, it, it just feels off. Whereas with wider, I just feel that the conversion it does from stereo to mono works really, really well. Uh, and it's one of the best ones I've ever seen. Oh, the scene I've heard. Uh, so I really recommend this one. And once again, it's free. This isn't going to let you turn something into a mono signal. That's the only thing. It's only going to let you push stuff out to the sides. You know, 200%. Off you go. Uh, so really, this is only good for, you know, making sounds wider. Hence the name. Um, check that out. As I said, it's free. Won't cost you a penny. Get it downloaded. And then this one is once again like the workhorse. Something that a lot of people use. This one will let you turn things to mono. So by pulling it down, you can yeah turn any signal you've got into mono, or you can obviously push it out you know to the sides however wide you want. Be a bit more careful with this. I don't think the conversion to mono from when you widen sounds is as good, uh, but it is you know it, it is it's a decent plugin. I, I I do recommend this, and it also lets you work on the asymmetry. So it lets you sort of move stuff left to right. You know, panning it however you want. You know, different options with the width and stuff as well. When you're panning it, you know, get all kinds of crazy sort of stereo scoping with this. Uh, same with the rotation, the rotation function. You know, if you really want to start getting into, I guess, more of a 3D, um, 3D field of things, this will basically do everything you need it to do. Uh, not that expensive. Waves, 
they're always on sale. Uh, another great one to check out on Black Friday. They have you know big sales on on a Black Friday, um, and yeah, you know that'll be able to do anything you need to do in terms of stereo imaging. So next we look at EQ compression. I've once again just sort of picked my favourites, ones that I like using. This right here is my absolute superstar. I use this for absolutely everything. Sometimes I use like two or three of these on a channel. Uh, it just does everything. You know, you can make it bigger. It has a frequency analyzer or frequency spectrum on there. You know, anything you want. You know, it just does it. it doesn't really have a sound to it. You know, it's a pretty transparent limiter. You can listen to the individual bands. You know, if you give it a low Q and you want to sort of maybe look for some resonant frequencies. You'll press this button and you'll only hear that, you know, you'll only hear whatever it is that you're hovering over. Also does mid-side EQ. So if you say you only want to, you know, you want to sort of maybe bump, bump the low on the mid, or, you know, on the, on the mono side. Or you want to maybe widen, you know, widen the top, top end side, you know, the stereo of the, of the side channel. It does absolutely everything. Cuts, you know, sharp cuts, not so sharp cuts. Uh, shelves just yeah you know everything it, it just does and it does it well and I love it uh, one of my most used plugins right there and it comes with Ableton you know so you don't have to really spend any money for that apart from buying the DAW next the pull tech so a really classic analog EQ love this sound on things like kick drums bass um, really fattens them up gives them just a really nice bump uh, in sort of the 60 or 30 hertz region maybe for basses a bit more to the 100 also works nice on top end as well if you want to sort of boost your leads at maybe 10k or your hats you know 12 16k uh, there's lots of Paul tech emulations I've just got the UAD one here uh, but you know there's, there's there's loads of different companies that do a Paul tech emulation uh, well worth getting or looking into um, it just has a very pleasing sound to me it's, it's just great for warming stuff up especially bass uh, I think it works really well on there split EQ this is a kind of new one from Eventide once again I think you might need an eye lock for this what's good about this one is you can move the tone so the tonal side of things and the transient side of things separately so tonal and transients so for example maybe you have a really annoying sort of frequency around you know let's say 3k uh, but you actually like the attack in that area of whatever the sound is so what you would do is you would dip the tonal side to sort of get rid of the resonance and then you can maybe just boost the transient side to keep that click or whatever it is uh, once again it can be used as you know a similar EQ it doesn't do anything that what this you know EQ8 doesn't do. Uh, you just have a bit more control. You know you can do a little bit more with it, um, and that the main function is that sort of split between transient and tonal. Uh, then we have the Marg EQ. Everyone loves this. The Airband boosting it to ten. No, don't do that. Um, nice as well. I started using this a little bit less just because I don't really think I need it anymore I find a lot of leads now a lot of trance is just going very very top end heavy and I think it's because a lot of people are using the Marg EQ and you know boosting it to ridiculous amounts don't think it's needed but you know it, it does have a nice it, it can have a nice sound I would just say maybe you know use it with caution um, don't go too crazy on it now we come to the compressors so the first one our base lots of people use this thanks to mr sean tyus for that future or that it was it future music uh, tutorial that he did like a long time ago uh, where he showed the world our base and i think ever since then it's pretty much been a staple you know can work great on kicks can work great on you know subs what your base is very easy as well um you know you sort of just putting it on even at zero uh, you will notice a big bump in your base so be careful with it once again use it with caution because you can very quickly just boost your base way too much 
uh, and you know you're gonna have a real problem when it comes to mixing down the track this one so Drake the rapper Drake apparently his producer said this was the single most important plugin that has ever been made I know that's quite a statement but you know he might have had something there because when you're working with vocals or anything that's really dynamic so strings you know pads all you do you move this slider down so you start seeing a bit of action here and that's it it's done and I don't know what it's doing exactly but it really works well on you know very dynamic sounds and obviously especially vocals because uh, that's what it is originally designed for so if you're going to be working with vocals uh, get this one I've seen this one for free sometimes as well and it's always on offer so you know keep your eye on that one uh, next these are just you know just compressors that I use I like this one on my claps and my snares feel it can give them a nice whack um, this one I like using on my drum buffs you know the town and this is just a personal thing that I found uh, which is important as well guys you know a lot of plugins will come with a trial or a test period and you know you want to go out and try these plugins out just because I'm saying oh yeah this plugin that plugin that plugin you might use them and think well what's he talking about you know these plugins are rubbish um, you know these like I said this isn't the end all be all of production it's not like you have to use these plugins and only these plugins this is more just a you know a starting point you know things for you to check out you might like them you might not uh, and this one the SSL comp once again a plugin that is just used by a lot of people on their buses a uh, really nice uh, sounding compressor works very well as a glue compressor so if you have a lot of channels in a bus stick this on uh, and glue them together really like it you know there's once again many emulations of this you know there's UAD there is SSL themselves uh, waves which I think is the one that most people use um, definitely one to have a look at for your bus compressor or gluing things together and then I put this one on just as a bit of fun really this novel novel tech character not really sure what it does it just seems to beef up sounds I think it's like some sort of uh, saturation and compression in one um, there's a few good presets in here mix crisper I think it's called is one um, and vocals add breath is another one them two you know as i said i have no idea what these do but i tend to stick this one on plucks and it just gives them a little bit of extra punch helps them cut through the mix a bit better and i guess as the name says gives the sounds a bit of character so yeah that's it pretty much for eqs and compressors and you know i suppose a little fun one at the end in terms of saturation uh, you've also got fab filter definitely worth looking at the fab filter bundles pro c pro q saturn are the three ones that i would say are the best or worth looking at for you know to a start just fab filter plugins in general are really good um you know they are once again a bit more on the pricier side but essentially if you've got fab filter pro q saturn and Pro C2 and Pro L2 actually as well, sorry for the limiter because that one's really good. You've pretty much got everything you're ever going to need in terms of EQ, compression, limiting and even, you know, distortion. Those those plugins alone, if you get the bundle, you know, buy the bullet, buy the bundle, really, you're never actually going to need anything else. I really think you can do everything with them and more. They are a bit, like, they're very clean you know, the, the, they don't add much character or, you know, they're, they're very surgical, very precise. You know, the audio purists love them because they want to have as much control as possible over the sounds that they're working with. And, yeah, you know, they, they, they just do the job and they do it well and they don't add anything. There's not really any bells and whistles in terms of sound or warmth or analog character or anything like that. Um, they, they all do what they say on the tin and they do it very well 
so definitely worth checking them out as well uh, and now just some final sort of plugins so i've put this here for mastering ozone 9 i use this for my mastering if i'm you know if i finish a track i want to get to a point where i can send it out as a demo uh, i'll just use uh, ozone i tend to use the mastering assistant as a starting point uh, and this the maximizer i think this is one of the best limiters in the game even probably above the l2 by fab filter i just love this this um uh this limiter i think you can do a lot in terms of keeping transients alive uh it can, you can get them really really loud without it distorting or you know without it crackling everything you need in a mastering suite or in sort of the final stages that you want to do uh, on your track you know get ozone and you've got everything there uh you know really nice plugins everything you would need uh, from match eqs vintage compression limiters tape you know an exciter an imager different eqs dynamic e anything any sort of mastering job that you would need to do this can do it for you and it does it very very well uh, second i've got metering so you know everyone will say use your ears definitely definitely use your ears but sometimes it's nice to have a bit of visual feedback as well so span it's the one that everyone uses this one's free you can download this uh, right now it won't cost you a penny you know can help you with finding uh, you know the notes of say a kick drum uh, it can you know give you a sort of a, a view of how your mix is looking if that's the thing i mean really i would always say listen to the mix first and go with your ears this is why i said you know your monitors your listening environment are so important because if you've got good monitors and you've got a, a room that is treated well acoustically what you're hearing should be an accurate representation so if you're hearing a mix and it sounds really really good it should be really really good and span can sometimes maybe send you down the wrong path because you think well this mix sounds great but you know there's a dip here or there's a bit of a peak here and you know you might then go making unnecessary changes uh, if your room isn't that good then i do think you know span can point you in the right direction it's good for things like matching kick and bass uh you've also got different meterings on here as well so if you want to sort of see the different loudness levels you've got the bobcats k system metering on here all of that stuff uh you know you can you can use that you can see your peaks your correlation meter so you know is anything phasing basically if you need it to stick from here in the middle to here on the right if it starts going in this side of things you've got some phasing issues and you obviously need to sort them out there are some paid products for metering so this is hawkeye pretty much does the same thing what span does but a bit more detailed you know you can there's, there's a lot more depth to this there's a lot more things you can monitor in this uh, you can also you know really get to the the nitty gritty as it were of your tracks and uh, you know go very in depth uh, to the you know the different things from your levels to your frequencies uh, your rms obviously your correlation everything you know hawkeye does it's a really good analyzer and then finally uh, an absolute essential i would say for when it comes to sorting out your low end is an oscilloscope so this is the oscillos megascope there's also a free one called the smexoscope or something i, I can't remember the name but there, you know there are free one free oscilloscopes available that you can look at i use this for having a look at my kick and my sub and having a look at the overlap between the two uh, because that can cause issues it's hard to hear it even though they are there so in this instance even if your room is treated well there are going to be things that you might not necessarily hear but they, that things that can cause you issues uh, towards the end you know of, of, of or the track being finished so something like this definitely helps because it gives you you know like a microscope being able to go in depth have a look at it and sort you know sort that low end out to get everything nice and tight uh so yeah oscillos oscillos megascope uh is another sort of you know metering software so that's everything 
you know, in terms of plugins, synths, metering, imaging, delay, reverb, whatever it is. As I said, guys, these are not the be all, end all of plugins. You know, I'm not saying to anyone that you must go out now and buy all of these and use all of these. These are just ones that I like, you know. Yeah, there are some that a lot of people like. So, for example, Arts Acoustic Reverb, uh, Echo Boy, uh, Silent, Spire. You know, these are ones that are used by a lot of people. The SSL uh, bus compressor. And, you know, there's a reason to it that these are used heavily. It's because they're good. You know, they are they are good uh, plugins, good synths, good processors. But, you know... <sighs> especially with synths they do all have their own tone and their own character and at the minute everyone is just going mad on spire like I, you know this is just a synth that everyone in trance seems to be hammering including me <laughs> like i'm not i'm not outside of that that bubble um and it does kind of mean that stuff starts sounding a bit similar which isn't great um uh, but you know on the flip side of that it does its job and it does it very well um, so, you know, you know, it, it's, it, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one because these synths do a job. They do it very well, but they do lead to stuff just sounding a bit similar and everyone kind of sounding the same. So have a look, you know, use this as a starting point. But go on and look at other synths, you know, go on a on a journey of discovery, if it were, you know, Silent, I think, is an easy buy for anyone. I don't think anyone that buys Silent will ever regret it because this is a workhorse. You know, you will be able to make so many sounds on this and learn synthesis as you're doing it. Uh, you know, you can get the freshly squeezed definitive collection to have a look at the patches, see how they're made, see how they work, you know, to get a good idea of how this synth operates um this would probably always be my number one recommendation in terms of synths to buy first you can get it on a subscription as well you know where you pay for it monthly um i think on the same goes for spire on splice i think you can do it on like a rent you know rent to own scheme or, or whatever it is same with ozone that's also on a rent rent to rent to own scheme uh, DAWs that you can get get on a subscription at the minute are Reason. So if you want to get into Reason and you know work in the rack, messing around with all the wires and stuff, I mean it's a great it's a great little program. Uh, I use it as a plugin now because re the newest Reason you can actually just use it as a plugin in your DAW, and I love that because I don't really like the sequencer in Reason. I think it's a bit, you know, a little bit fiddly, I guess. Uh, and Studio One as well. You can get a subscription to Studio One, get full access to it, all their sample packs, tutorials, preset packs, everything. I think you can get it for £15 a month. So once you've got all that, or you've got some of these things, uh, let's just quickly go to two websites that I think will serve you well. So this is the first one, Meta and Glide's website. Ooh, let's make it bigger. So Mag Signature Sound, this is where you'll be able to buy their Spire sound sets. They've got their own plugin, Crystal Clear. Uh, definitely worth checking out, you know, only £17 right now. Uh, they've got templates, construction kits, sample packs, you know, everything. And it's all really good stuff. Like, And it's not expensive. Like, I think that's the best thing about Mag Signature Sound is that you will get quality um, products and you will not be paying a fortune for them uh, obviously guys another thing that goes without saying uh n this video isn't sponsored by anyone like i haven't been paid to say this about any of the products that i've mentioned today uh this is all just you know my own personal opinion in using these products and you know having used them for quite some time uh, and the second one freshly squeezed samples great website uh, so many good, you know, um, preset packs. This is where you'll get, you know, the definitive collection for June, for Silent, um, for Zebra. Pretty much every synth they'll have a pack for, usually made by, you know, a, a big name producer or artist. 
and obviously this is also where you have the Dave Parkinson trans essential sample packs so I think there's volume 1 and volume 2 anything you could need to get you going with making trans music all the samples you would ever need from effects to you know melodic, uh, ambient kick drums, claps percussions vocals, everything that you would ever need is right here uh, in these packs once again the only issue with it is, is that everyone uses them you know, I know people are kind of going a bit mad at the minute about parky fills um, because they're just being—it's just being done to death, um, and and that is to a certain extent the risk that you run. Um, I think when it comes to individual samples, so like you know, claps, snares, hats, kicks, stabs, whatever it is, you probably you know there's not going to be many people that will hear one of them and be like, yeah, that's. Dave Parkinson, Trans Essentials 2, Kick 13, I knew it. No, but when you start using the more distinctive sounds, um, like, for example, the melodic lead loops or the acid loops or the fills, then, you know, people will be able to recognise that. And, yeah, it just it just doesn't go down well. Uh, but this has, you know, many different genres as well. Uh, you can get vocals, um, you can get... You know, if you're into more progressive stuff like Anjuna stuff, or you want to make house music, um, you know, it's all here. Uh, Temple One has some really good uh, preset packs as well. Um, for Spire, he's got some good ones. And yeah, you know, just these two websites, guys magsignaturesound.com, freshlyswearedsamples.com. I'll put the links in the description. Um, check them out you know in terms of the sounds samples that you would need everything you would ever need you can get from here uh, so definitely worth checking out uh, but yeah that's going to be it for this first video guys sorry that you know I didn't really go into sort of any sound uh, I am going to be posting up more tutorials as we go along if you have any suggestions of what you would like to see from me please leave it in the comment box below uh, this video, you know, I'll be happy to take a look at that and do what I can. I'm going to try and, you know, do a lot more videos on here. Really aimed at helping beginner producers because I just don't think there's that much good quality trans tutorials on YouTube at the minute. Like, there's a few. Um, but all in all, I just think, yeah, you know, I, j I just feel the standard is lacking uh, by a long, long way. Uh, and hopefully, you know, I know Asteroid is doing some really good tutorials. So go check out his channel. Uh, I think Sam Laxton is also going to be doing some tutorials. Check out his channel. Uh, Mer or Mer, M-Y-R. He does some really good uh, trans tutorials. Check him out. And then, yeah, I'm going to be doing more in the next couple of months. So, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, all that usual funny YouTube stuff. Uh, my name is Angelus. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one.